probably I'm late buying this camera or you know even making this video but um, it is totally worth it it is 2024 and I bought the Fujifilm X-H2S now I'm wondering did I make a good choice I mean I know the camera is very good I've tried it and tested it in the past a couple of times and I know it will make my life a lot easier especially when client shoots but will it improve my photography that is the question I've had this camera for almost three months now and I really wanted it for some time. This summer I made a video um, in which I say that gear doesn't matter and um, a couple of months later a thing happened. During an event in Rome I realized the fact that my X-T4 was not meeting the demands that my clients have. I mean I can get by and I can make it work but the environment has changed, the clients have changed and keep changing every year, every month, you know. They want new things, they see new things, they want more, they want fast. So I realized that X-T4 is still good, but it just misses a few things here and there. Based on today's market and my clients' needs, I decided to take a big step and, uh, you know, switch to X-H2S. And by no means the X-T4 is a bad camera. I'm shooting on it right now. It's what you're seeing this angle. And it has 4K60, 10-bit internal, F-Log, very good dynamic range, IBIS. But admittedly, the 4K could be uncropped when you shoot 60 FPS, and the IBIS could be a lot improved. And let's not mention the fact, the big, huge elephant in the room, Fujifilm autofocus on the X-T4, X-T3, and the older cameras is not the best you can get by you can make it work if you know how the camera works you can you know use specific settings in specific moments but let's be honest sometimes you don't really have the time to think about it or you don't really want to learn specific settings for specific moments for specific lenses so if i use an 18 to 55 i know that the camera will work better with certain autofocus settings but if i switch for example to the 35 millimeters f2 i know that i have to use other settings for video for example so you know it's a lot of back and forth sometimes it can get really um, unnecessarily long but the xh2s takes this to a whole other level so the camera knows what you want to focus on it's like it already knows and it sticks to the subject but sometimes when you when the camera is in sleep mode it will take like a few seconds to actually understand what to focus on so it's not immediate so if the camera is you're walking with a camera in your hand and the screen is off if you put it like up to your eye level and want to shoot on something you might miss the focus but i think it's understandable i don't really have an issue with that and so far i really enjoyed shooting with the xh2s i think it's a very reliable camera with a reliable autofocus and for me it worked really well so far. I have missed like a few shots but I'm gonna be honest here, I shoot Sony an A7 IV on some of my paid gigs because the client requires me to shoot with that and uh, it misses as well some shots. I'm, the video autofocus probably is better but in, f in photos sometimes it, it also misses so it, no autofocus is perfect. So the X-H2S seems like a really really good camera. It can shoot 4K up to 120 frames per second but I usually stop at 60 FPS because I don't know 120 seems like too much and the quality on 4K 120 is not very very bad at all like I was expecting it to be like you know a lot grainier but uh, it actually looks quite good and since we're talking about resolutions and uh, frame rates what about the 6.2k up to 30 frames per second this camera shoots 6.2k open gate so you get a lot of room to play with cross posting and reusing content that you shot for YouTube for example to post it on Instagram so you shoot something horizontal you get a lot of space on the, on the top and on the bottom so you can repurpose that for other platforms which I think it's a really really good options it will get a lot of space on your memory cards but it's worth it and especially if you do it for clients you don't really want to shoot twice it's better to shoot just once go there shoot and you're done and it will look better and you will have a little bit more space to edit Basically, this open gate thing, it's using the whole sensor of the camera. And instead of using, you know, the 16 by 9 and you get that letterbox thing. 
Um, here's a con that I found, no physical switch for manual or autofocus on the camera. You go into the settings and you switch the camera from autofocus to manual focus or you use a custom setting. But what I found that's really, really easy to use and useful is to set the manual focus autofocus ring. And basically, if you turn the focusing ring on the lens, it will switch automatically to manual focus in video. In photo it's a little bit different, but I don't really shoot manual focus in photos, so I don't really care. But in video, if you turn this feature on, it will switch automatically to manual focus until you press the or half press the shutter button. And I found it really useful when I shot interviews on the red carpet for the European Film Awards in Berlin. I half pressed on the shutter and then I slightly moved the focusing ring and I was in manual focus, nothing could go wrong. The Fujifilm X-H2S is an incredible tool to have in your pocket for client work. The amount of bit rates and modes that you have on this camera is ridiculous. It's more than you will ever use or ever need actually. 6K at 50, 100, 200, 360, 720 megabits per second, same for 4K and 1080p. You get all intra or long GOP, 420 or 422, you get H264, H265 codecs, you can even shoot it ProRes HQ, ProRes 422, ProRes LT, 10 bit, it's like I'm even confused sometimes. And the camera allows you to record proxies inside the camera. I know Sony cameras do that as well, but this is a really cool feature to have now on the Fujifilm cameras. And um, especially for people that don't have super strong computers, but they still want to shoot in very good quality, this camera is, uh, you know, it, it allows you to do that, even if you have like a slower editing machine. It has more features than most people know what to do with or ever use, myself included. But the very good thing for me is the autofocus in video. It's very fast now. You know, I don't have to think about it. I just use I autofocus for talking head, while with the X-T4, I could not do that. There is a little bit of an issue with the car door on the side. It looks a little bit squishy. I mean, it never gave, gave me any problems and I've used it in the rain, but I, and I realized that it moves a little bit. I don't know what to think about it. Do you have that issue as well? Is it my model or... You know, is it, is it just like that? Overall, physically speaking, the camera feels rather good in the hand and it feels like it's built for professionals who would take the camera in all kinds of situations, from rain to snow to the desert and dust and, uh, you know, everything really. Or in other words, it's built like a tank. The grip on the camera is okay. Sometimes I feel like it's a little bit too big, but maybe it's because I'm used to the uh, X-T4 and the more the time passes, the more I'm getting used to it. Buttons and dials, this is the part that I actually thought it would annoy me the most. Being so used to the dials and the feel of my X-T4s and X100F, switching to the X-H2S is a very big change. I still find myself wanting to turn the wheels for the ISO or for the shutter speed sometimes, but I discovered that with time you get used to you know, the classical dials that you have on almost every other camera. I do come from a background with Nikon and with that you would have to use you know, classical dials to change everything. Now I don't find it very annoying at all. And it's not that big of a deal, but I totally see why some Fujifilm hardcore fans would get, would be annoyed by it. And let's get to the custom settings dials. That is one of the biggest things on the camera and a lot of people, myself included, wanted it. When I'm on shoots and I want to rapidly shoot some um, slow motion for example or to shoot in between 4k and 1080p or anything really having a custom dial with nine custom settings that i can just flick and switch into makes my professional life very easy and more enjoyable and it makes me not miss many moments on the xt4 i would have to mess with the settings and occasionally i would miss some shots now all i need to do is to dial in a few settings save them and they'll be ready at the flick of a button and life becomes a lot easier. Now, I don't think this camera is for everybody. I think that if you don't shoot professionally and you don't shoot a lot of video professionally, there's no need for you to buy this camera to spend a lot of money on it. Um, probably it's better to stick with the X-T5 or the X-H2 because this camera has been built with a professional videographer that shoots photos as well in mind. If you only shoot 
photos and you occasionally shoot some video, X-T5 is a much better option. X-T4 is still a very, very valid option. If you don't require particular video features and autofocus features, in certain conditions. If using the camera doesn't bring you any money or you don't want the camera to bring you any money, you're just doing it for the pleasure of doing it, I feel like probably this is too much. But if you have the money, by all means, my friends, buy the camera because you're gonna fucking love it. Probably I'm late buying this camera or you know even making this video, but um, it is totally worth it.